Good morning, Zach. Good morning, Rebecca. How's it going? How are you? Good. Yeah, so for folks joining, um, here's a couple things you can do to get started. Uh, we've got a ton to go through today. We're going to talk about um, instrumenting API security in your build pipeline, automating it if we get there. But what we're for sure going to get to is we're going to show you how to use Stackhawk, um, our scanner called HawkScan, to scan your applications, to scan your APIs, uh, some of the <clears throat> some of the tools that we've got in our scanner to make that easier, um, make it easier to automate, and make it uh, successful at deeply scanning your APIs. Wonderful. And I, Zach, your screen is just showing up really, really small for me. I'm wondering. Oh, I wonder what that is about. You know, we love Hopin in the screen sharing on Hopin. We have perfect luck every time. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, let me try resharing. I would go ahead and drop those links in okay. into the chat. Folks that are joining. Entire screen share. There we go. How's that? Let's see. Do you see my oh, magic? Perfect. Face? I can see myself much larger, which I love. Cool. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> We've got really limited time, so we might want to just get started. Hopefully, folks are. If you've got a GitHub account, that's great. That's important. Uh, we're also going to be using Docker and Docker Compose. And if you have time, go ahead and pull the Stackhawk slash Hawkscan image. That's the scanner that we're going to be using. And then ultimately, we're going to be forking this Java Spring Volney project, which is our test app that we're going to be scanning against. Um, and we'll walk through each of these, although you do need GitHub and Docker and Docker Compose installed to begin. So hopefully you've got that. All right. So the talk is, the workshop is, how to automate API security with Stackhawk. And I am Zachary Conger, Senior DevOps Engineer, here with Rebecca Warren, who is um, going to help out with uh, I'm sorry, Rebecca. Um, Rebecca is also with me from Stackhawk. She's in marketing and she's super helpful with these talks in helping me um, field questions uh, and Q and A from the from the uh, crowd and and also posting links. She'll be posting links and commands to the chat so that you, um, everybody's working from the same page because we're going to be running a bunch of commands from the command line and editing a configuration file or two. So she'll be posting those to the chat so that you can follow along more, more quickly. Um, I've been in the industry. I started out as an IT guy 20, 20 some years ago. Uh, been a DevOps early adopter, got into automating things uh, pretty early on. These days, I'm a developer, automator, tester, and observer of um, all things development and software and infrastructure. In my spare time, I'm also a musician. I like to ride bicycles, and I'm a bit of an amateur photographer. The prerequisites, again, for this workshop are a GitHub account, Docker and Docker Compose, and Hawkscan itself, um, which we will pull later. But if you pull it now, it's kind of a big image filled with lots of security and good stuff. Um, so if you get a start on that right away, that will help you catch up faster. And please do ask questions. Um, Rebecca is going to be fielding them in the chat and stopping me if I go too fast. Um, we look forward to everybody participating. So I just want to um, sort of set the table with a couple common security testing methods that uh, are common these days in build pipelines or becoming common in build pipelines. 
We're just going to be doing DAST, but uh, other common methods are SCA, software composition analysis, which basically looks at your static code, analyzes all the dependencies that you pull in, and reports on known vulnerabilities in any specific library versions that it finds in your dependency chain. It kind of has no false positives because um, these are all known vulnerabilities and they've been documented pretty well. But on the other hand, you may not exercise uh, those dependencies. You may not expose the vulnerabilities that are, that are present in, in those vulnerable libraries. Um, one advantage of SCA is it's very fast, usually. Uh, common tools are Dependabot, which is a GitHub property, Sneak, uh, who kind of popularized the notion of putting SCA in your pop pipeline, and the open source tool FASA. Another kind of tool is, uh, or another method of testing is SAST, or static application security testing. And this is another form of testing that operates on static code. It analyzes your code base and it looks for patterns that might indicate that you've got a vulnerability and it reports on them. And a cool thing about it is that it can show you exactly which file and which line in the file that vulnerability is. And it finds your bugs, not the bugs of your dependencies. It can suffer from high false positives and it can be a bit slow, um, but it's another good method of testing and automating your tests. Some of the popular utilities for this are CodeQL, which is also GitHub, SonarCube, and, and Checkmarks. And finally, what we're gonna be working on today <clears throat> is DAST. DAST operates on your running code. So you fire up your service <clears throat> and your DAST scanner actually will probe your service uh, with multiple probes, and it listens for the responses to those probes, and based on the responses, determines if it thinks that there's a vulnerability. It doesn't care what language you're using. It can operate on any code base at all, because it never looks at your code. And it finds your bugs, um, but also the bugs in your dependencies if those are exposed. Uh, so it's really good. It's really thorough. Um, it's got, it, it has lower false positives than SAST, um, but it can also be a bit slow, and that's determined largely by the performance of your application and how complicated it is. Some of the popular tools for this are Burp Suite, which is very popular among pen testers, but difficult to automate. OWASP Zap, which is an open source uh, utility that is also very popular among pen testers and has some automation capabilities. And then what we're talking about today is Stackhawk, which is built on OWASP Zap but has, uh, has really been built for automation and use among teams. So a little bit more about Stackhawk. We build a modern dynamic application security test scanner. Uh, our scanner technology is based on the open source OWASP ZAP, which is a 10, I think it's a 10 year old project um, founded by uh, Simon Bennett, who's a distinguished engineer at Stackhawk and uh, and uh, it's uh, Hawkscan is packaged as a Docker container. That's part of what makes it easier to integrate into CI CD tool chains and easier to automate. We have a simple YAML configuration, a single place where you can configure all of the details of your scan. Uh, that also helps with automation. And uh, we back it with an online platform, uh, which is useful for tracking your scans over time. We also have integrations with Slack and MS Teams so that you can integrate with uh, team notifications and let people know when scans are happening and when new results come in. We also integrate with JIRA uh, for triage and collaboration so that you can take vulnerabilities that have been found and uh, hook those over to a developer and get people working on it and track those to completion. And if there's other tools that you wanna integrate with, we also support web webhooks so as long as you can integrate in that way, we've got you covered. Okay, let's get started. First thing we want to do is fork this repository at GitHub. It's in the Kaka organization, Java Spring Volney. Um, and we'll post this uh, link to the chat. Um, and then once you have that forked, please clone it down to your workstation and uh, your commands should look something like this, git clone your uh, GitHub repository organization, Java Spring Balney, 
and then CD into that directory. And that would be also, also be helpful if you have an IDE, if you have a favorite IDE or text editor, go ahead and get that IDE or text editor situated on your Java Spring Volney clone. So I'm going to walk through this myself. So we're here at the Kaka Java Spring Volney repository. I'm just going to go hit the fork button, fork it over to my Zconger organization. Should take just a second. And there we go. So I've got my fork. And if you hit this big green code button over here, you can copy uh, your clone command or your clone source. I like to use git, uh, or sorry, SSH. Um, you can use HTTPS, that's fine too. Um, but for the automation portion later, we're gonna wanna be able to push, um, uh, we're gonna be, wanna be able to push back to GitHub. So it's not just a clone for clone's sake, we're actually gonna be pushing uh, commits back to GitHub. So I'll clone this down. Um, git clone that. There we go. I'm going to CD in there. I'm going to open it up in my IDE. I'm going to use um, VS Code today. I usually use IntelliJ IDEA, but um, <clears throat> but this one's really good for presenting because it's for some whatever reason it's easier to scale up and down, so you can see it. All right. Go find my repo. So many repos. Java Spring Volney. And Zach, while you're bringing that up, I do just want to remind folks that we are here in the chat. If you're running in, if we're going too fast or, you know, you aren't quite sure how to run that git clone command or CD into that directory, um, just drop us a line in the chat. We're here to help. We want everybody to be able to follow along. So we have a lot to cover when it comes to API security testing, which is why we're moving quickly, but um, want this to be a, a fruitful experience for everyone. So feel free to drop us a line in the chat if you're running into any problems. Yeah. Yeah, if anybody's stuck or, um, uh, yeah, please let us know and we'll, we'll slow down and wait for you for sure and give you a hand. Okay. To go back to the slide deck. So this is where we should be. You've got a fork, you've cloned it, um, and you're looking at the Java Spring Volney application in your IDE. Um, I'll pull up the README. There we go. So um, this application is an intentionally vulnerable application, although it's not terribly vulnerable. The thing that I like about it is it's got multiple methods of authentication. And we're going to use a method of authentication that looks an awful lot like an API key, which is probably going to be a test, a common testing scenario for a lot of you in attendance today. So it's really easy to get this thing running. If you've got Docker Compose, we're just going to run Docker Compose up, dash dash build to build it, and dash dash detach to detach from the console uh, once it's up and running. So then it'll be up and running in the background. So go ahead and do this to get uh, to get Java Spring Volney running on your workstation. And then when it's up and running, you can uh, open it in a browser. Any browsers should do. Um, from the command line, you can say open this URL. Importantly, it's HTTPS localhost port 9000. And then we'll, we'll, we'll gather back here once we've all got this running. So I'm going to go ahead and do that myself. Docker compose up, build, and detach. First, just make sure I don't have it running from last night. I do. OK. So bring mine down. And now I will bring it up. Okay, so it goes through the build routine. I've already built mine, so the build routine is going to go really fast. Uh, for me, it's probably going to take a bit longer for you, but you'll see all this status and detail about what it's doing. It's 
basically a Java, from, I'm sure you guessed from the name, it's a Java Spring application. Um, its main feature is it's got a simple search and a simple database behind it um, and some API endpoints and a number of different uh, methods of authentication. So then once it's up, we're going to browse to the endpoint. Um, and once you get it up and, you're, and it's in your browser, I want you to browse to, um, there's a section called token auth. And that's where, of course, we can do token authentication, which is essentially like an API key. Okay, so mine is up. And I'm going to go ahead and browse to it. And it's HTTPS localhost port 9000. And it's got these different sections for different forms of authentication. And we want to go to token auth. And it actually gives you the hint right in the field about what uh, we're going to do here. So we'll give it a token name of sh auth token and a token value of it's a secret. And when you do that, um, what it's going to do when you do a search is every time you send in a request to the search field, it's going to pass uh, a request header in called sh, sh auth token. And the value of that request header is going to be it's a secret. So I'll fill mine in. sh auth token and go ahead and do this at home. Uh, and I'm going to search for item. Me. Item one, you can just search for one or item or whatever. And you see that you get a search result. If I get the token wrong and search, then I don't get my search results. Access is denied. So um, change that back to the right token. I'd like for you to open up your browser tools if you're familiar with where those are. Um, I got to remember where mine are. There we go. So open up your browser developer tools so we can take a look at the network tab and look at the requests as they go through. I just want to just show you the headers just to make it real. So if I hit search again, you can see that um, what I've got is an XHR request that went through to the back end of this app, uh, the API portion of this app. It found this path, API token items search and my search request, item one. And there are a number of response headers, but importantly, here is the API key uh, token. Here's the API token getting passed in. Um, so that's what we're going to use for authentication a little bit later when we run our scans. I want to do a little check and see um, how everybody is. is. Is anybody stuck or behind? Please. Um, Shoot us a chat and let us know if you need a hand. We typically run these workshops in Discord where we have people react to let us know if they're following along. Unfortunately, Hopin doesn't have that capability. So um, just let us know if you've been able to get to that item search. Um, I know when we've run these workshops before, folks have struggled with getting the app open and running um, or getting to that right token page. So if that is the case, feel free to let us know and we can help you troubleshoot that. I get the sense we've got a lot of pros on board today. This is awesome. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and move on. Um, now we wanna get our first Hawk scan up and going. So. Here's where we're going to go set up our Stackhawk account. And what you want to do when you get there is just enroll. Um, I'm going to use Google Authentication. You can use Google or GitHub, or you can set up your own email. Uh, you can use your own email account and set up your own password with us. That takes a little bit longer because you have to do an email verification. Um, so I recommend Google. That's what I always use. Um, we'll walk through the setup there, and it's going to, um, at the end of our sort of onboarding process, it'll give us a simple Stackhawk configuration file that'll look pretty much like this 
although you're going to have a unique application ID that you're going to plug into it. And we're going to put that in our repository at the base of our Java Spring Volney Git repository. Um, and, and this is going to be the configuration for our first scan. And here's the command that we're going to run to do it. So another thing that you're going to get from the onboarding process is an API key. You're going to want to stash that um, in, a, in, a, in a place, someplace safe where you can get to it again. You're also going to want to export it on the command line as API underscore key so that we can run a scan this way. All right, so I'm going to get started. Heading over to app.stackhawk.com. I'm going to hit sign up for an account here. And I'm going to sign up with Google using one of my many aliases, z at econger.com. And it drops me in and says, hey, welcome. Welcome to Stackhawk. Uh, we're going to set you up with a, an initial organization name. And this is because we're intended to be used with teams. So you can in invite other people to your team. And I'm going to call my team Zach Hawk. Um, just a little bit more information about your credentials provider and profile information. You can hit continue here. And please select the free developer account. So this gives you unlimited scans with a single application. Um, you, can, you can also do uh, CI CD automation and even Slack integration. Continue. And we're also going to select scan my application. Um, you, could, you could choose Google Firing Range. You can do that in the future too. This just loads up uh, Hawk, StackHawk with some sample data. So you can start looking at the, the dashboard. Uh, but we're going to scan our own application. Hit continue. Welcome to StackHawk. So now it's going to walk us through the process of setting up our API key and our first application in the system. So let's get started. So the first, th first thing is it shows us an API key. It only shows us this once. So please save this in a secure, undisclosed location. I'm going to go ahead and export it right now as API underscore key equals my key. And I recommend that you also do this at home because um, we're going to use that when we run our scans. Um, and now you can also copy and paste this these sets this set of commands. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do it. Um, it stores your API key as, uh, as a variable called Hawk API key just to distinguish it. And it stashes that into a file uh, from your home directory .hawk slash hawkrc. Uh, and it, if you do that, then you'll have a place to go to go find it if you lose track of it later. Okay. Next. Thank you, Rebecca. Um, application name. So Java Spring Volney. Normally, this is just the the uh, the name of your repository for your for your application, assuming you have one repo for for apps, uh, or one repo per app. So I'm going to call mine Java Spring Volney. You can call it whatever you like, and then we get to this tech flag section, and I want you to flip this lever on, and let's select our tech flags. This can speed up your scans if you just limit your scans to particular technologies that you're actually using. So for our database, let's pick MySQL, Postgres, and SQLite, because um, those are the options for the databases for this app. Also select Java, JavaScript, and JSP Servlet. Those are the technologies used in the application for the front end and the back end sections. For OS, pick them all. It's OK. Whatever platform you're running on is fine. Um, for SCM, really doesn't matter, but choose Git because that's what we're using. And for the web server, we don't actually have one, uh, but use Apache because uh, the web server that's embedded in this application is probably most similar to Apache and not IIS. 
And if you don't get this all right, that's okay. You can go back and tweak these later. Finally, for environment. So we have a concept of environments that you'll run a scan in. So each app can have multiple environments. These rep represent like development if you're working on your workstation, pre-prod if you're building it in your pipeline and scanning it in a pre-production environment and so forth. Um, it's arbitrary, pick development for now. And our host that we're going to be scanning is, again, HTTPS localhost port 9000. Next, the application is created. You can see in the background here, a card has been created for Java Spring Volney. And we've got a new application ID. Uh, good to keep track of, but that's going to be in our Stackhawk YAML as well. And, and then there's a little help section here to show you how to run um, your first scan, but don't follow this one. Just grab your stackhawk.yaml and let's copy that into your repository. So I've downloaded it, um, save it there. I'm going to open it in a browser. Actually, I'm going to open it in a text editor. And what you should, should see here when this opens, geez, Adam, don't work too hard. OK, so um, it's got a ton of commented out stuff. The important part is just up here. Um, we really just need these four lines. So there's an application section to the configuration file for Hawkscan. And the critical components are, what's your application ID? What environment are you targeting? And what host are you trying to hit? So I'm going to copy this, actually. I'm going to paste it into a configuration using my IDE. So I'm going to open. You'll find that there's actually already a stackhawk.yaml file in here. And it's not quite right for your environment, but it's close. So you can just copy paste over it. And I'm going to remove some of this extraneous experience commentary. We've got application ID, environment, and host. So you can copy that out to the chat, uh, something similar to this. Should have that, yeah. So we'll copy this out, and you just replace app ID with your actual application ID that you just got from the platform. Yes, and Hopin doesn't like separate lines in the chat. So um, just make sure each of those variables lives on a separate line in your YAML. Yeah. All right. Oh, doesn't like separate lines. So this is going to be a little bit of a challenge. Let me translate this to a single line um, real quick. That's OK. I can always just paste each one individually. Exactly. Cool. That's better. Cool. Sounds good. All right, so we're going to do this docker run command. And I actually need to go copy paste it myself. I want to do it exactly the same. So if you guys get any errors, I get the same one. I've already exported my API key. If you haven't, please do that now from your command line. And then we'll run this docker, command, docker run command. Um, and just to sort of walk through what this is doing. We're saying docker run dash dash volume to mount the current working directory. So it's important that you're in the, the repo directory when you do this. So it's going um, to mount that, your current working directory, as the slash hawk directory within the hawk scan container. And that's where it can find your configuration file, basically. Next line is TTY, that's so it can print output as it goes. Next line is network host, which um, gives Docker access to your workstation's network stack. And networking just tends to run better that way. Since we're a scanner, we make he heavy use of the network. I j you don't always have to do this, but I just typically do because it does no harm. And then dash dash env api key, that passes 
our API key into the container so that Hotscan can pick it up and use it to communicate back to our platform. So here we go. Let's run that scan. Boom. Error, loading files. Let's see what I messed up. So we're in this directory. I've saved this file. Um, configuration exception, application ID, and app env are required. I may not have saved the file before I ran it. Let me try this one more time. There we go. So it picked up the configuration, and it's giving me a little bit of a status here, um, showing me what version of Hawkscan I'm running, what host it's targeting, the development environment uh, that we're targeting, and a scan ID that's going to show up in the platform. Uh, also, GraphQL is set to false. If you have a GraphQL application, we are uniquely qualified to scan GraphQL applications. We've put a lot of work into that to make it um, really strong at um, reconciling, like figuring out your, your GraphQL application, scanning it enough to give you a thorough scan, but not so much as to be in an infinite loop of GraphQL muggery. All right, so it's scanning. It found some paths using the standard spider, and it's starting to run the actual scan and run probes against it. If you go back to the Stackhawk application window, um, hit finish on this, and head over to the scans section, we'll see that this scan just started. We've got a little status bar here that shows how far we've gotten, what findings we have found so far, which is none. And we can click into this scan for more details and see, OK, um, from the plugin summary, we've, we've got some plugins running and probing. Um, we've found several paths. And then in this findings section, um, we start to see results trickle in. Hey, I found an anti-CSRF token scanner uh, finding, and that is a high criticality event. We've got a medi some mediums and some lows. And you can click into these. Let's click into the security policy, the content security policy header. And from here, you can see um, more detail about the alerts that it found. So it found this problem. There's no content security policy header set, um, which means that on your response header, it's, it's hoping to see a, a header called content security policy, which defines where content should be be able to come from from this application. Um, and it's a medium, but it's definitely good to have in your applications, and it's pointed that out. Um, you can also click on the different paths. You can select all of them. You can take actions on these. You could assign it. If we were hooked up to JIRA, it would kick a ticket over to JIRA. You can mark it as false positive or accept the risk. And um, over here on the right side is some information, some ev evidence about the scan that it just made. So for this basic auth endpoint, um, here is the actual get request that we sent in. We tried to get basic auth. Um, here's the request headers that the, the scanner sent in. And click over to response, and you see the exact response that we got, the response headers, as well as the body of, of, of it. You can also click Validate, and the Validate button will give you a curl command that you can use. You can paste this into the command line, run it, and you will get the same results, or you should get the same results that the scanner did. And this is just you know, helpful tools that we've created to make it easier to troubleshoot these issues um, as, you found, as you find them. So for a developer working on this issue, they got a JIRA ticket about it. They have a link back to these results, and they can look at this evidence and all of this detail. All right, I'm going to head back here. We need to move on. Um, hopefully that worked for everybody else. Next, we want to add um, 
an, an API configuration. So we just use the standard spider. And that's like a normal web spider. It starts at the root of your website and it tries to crawl the site from there, finding links and hitting those links. We don't want that. We want to use our open API spec. Uh, and this application has an open API spec from the application itself at this path slash open API. So we're just going to add this section and the hawk spider base false section. Um, and let me just copy paste that myself. Show you what that looks like. Rebecca has her work cut out for her to get this formatted correctly. Obviously with YAML, the, the formatting is really important. So I'm just gonna add Add that section. So again, I've just added an open API configuration to Hawkscan. Said, hey, the path to our open API spec is slash open API on the application itself. And then we want to turn off the, the base spider, the, the standard web spider. Um, and now you can run this scan yourself if you want. Because we're we have time constraints, I actually I'm, I'm going to keep on moving. I'm pretty confident that this will work. Uh, I'm going to keep on moving and go ahead and add authentication as well. I'm going to add authentication right here. And this section is a little bit more complicated. So here's what we're going to add now is an authentication section. And we call it external authentication because oftentimes you might go to an external ser service like Auth0 or Ping Identity to get external tokens and stuff if you're integrated with them for authentication. We support a, a number of different authentication methods. But this also works really well for API tokens. And so we're going to say, hey, we've got an external authentication method. The type is it, it's, we're going to expect a token. The value of that token is going to be API token, um, which is a, which is a, an environment variable that we're going to feed into Hawkscan. And so this is demonstrating that you can feed in variables into the configuration, which is useful when you've got secret information like an API token. You want to do your best to hide that. Um, the token authorization method is going to be from a header, and the header is called sh auth token. So in the end, what this produces is for every request that the scanner come, uh, sends in, there's a request header called sh auth token, and the value of that uh, header is going to be the API token that we feed in. We're also going to insert a test path, um, which is the same as that uh, search path that we saw in the browser tools when we when we went to the website manually. Um, so basically this path, although you can also just search for one, and that's, that's what I've done for the test path in my configuration. So it's going to be that path. Um, and then when we hit that test path, we expect to get a, a 200 status code response. So we have this um, regex here to, to say, hey, this is what I expect to, to see back. We also have a logged in indicator and a logged out indicator. Um, this is just some search text that you can search the page for. If we're logged in, we should see sign out. We actually don't have a good stable logged out indicator, so I just inserted some random text. Um, this is going to be used by the scanner periodically just to check that it's still logged in. And the reason for that is because um, sometimes these tokens are short lived and we want the scanner to be able to let you know, hey, I was scanning, but your your token timed out. And again, we're still uh, we still have no uh, typical spider. We're still just using the Open API spider. So I'm going to copy and paste that in myself. Stand by. And I'm going to 
gonna add it in right here. So that looks good. I've got all my, my parts. Open API configuration, an authentication section. I've got a new variable that I need to feed into this thing called API token. So let's go ahead and do that too. I'm gonna to export the variable API token and that is going to equal, if you recall, it's a secret. It's a secret. Then we will also um, want to feed this variable in, and I'll show you how to do that. So you've exported the API token. It's a secret. And now we're going to run the same, virtually the same Docker run command, except this time, um, we're going to insert another environment variable called API token. That's the one we just exported. So I'm going to copy paste that myself and get it running. Docker run, same volume, TTY, network host, environment variables. API key for the Stackhawk platform itself to send results back, and API token to authenticate to um, the Java Spring Baldini app. So here we go. Hit run, get a little status update. And up front, it's going to do some checking uh, to make sure that it can authenticate, and it'll fail quickly um, to let you know, hey, authentication didn't work. This is just a try and speed up the, um, the iteration cycle as you try to get authentication configured. Looks like we're good. We're starting to scan. Got a new spider, uh, spider running. We found these URLs. Did I forget to save again? I probably did. All right, I'm actually gonna cancel this scan. And so I'll be getting error results to the platform. I can show you that too. Try one more time. Keep saving my configuration file. Um, what I saw here that I didn't like was um, this looks like this looks a bit like a standard spider results. We should see a lot more API paths. There we go. So we've got paths that start with API and that's what I like to see. That indicates that it found the open API configuration and it's searched it and now it's trying to scan those paths. So we can go back to the Stackhawk console. There's my errored out scan that I biffed on. And then here are the results starting to trickle in um, from the new scan, which now has an open API config and API key authentication. So the paths that we the paths that we found uh, are listed here. Um, there's a ton of paths, and this actually has different paths that are available to the different authentication methods. So here are the paths that we're really concerned about because we used token authentication. And we've got findings coming in. So we actually have fewer findings this time. Um, we still have the CSP header not set. Got this proxy disclosure disclosure issue and a cookie slack detector. Detector, not too bad really. Um, and in fact, if you look at the proxy disclosure, um, what this is is um, sometimes some proxy servers and also APIs will send back this this header X frame options, um, and that lets you know if basically how cores is configured for this particular endpoint, and that can be bad, but in the case of an API, it's often useful. So it, this is a case where you might select all of these and say, hey, um, 
I accept the risk. That's okay. This is fine. Great. So we've gone through a lot. Um, we have done open API, we've scanned, we've got this app up and running. Um, for the final trick, um, if people could hang, I know it's it's running a bit late, so if you've got another session you need to get to, you may need to break away. But what I'd like to do now is get this all automated in um, GitHub Actions. So I haven't talked about GitHub Actions, but um, you may be familiar with it. Um, GitHub Actions is a, a CI CD pipeline that's actually built into GitHub. And it's very easy to configure. Um, oh, man. I'm so sorry, Rebecca, but here is uh, the configuration that we're going to be using. So what we'll do is we'll just create a file in our repository uh, in the .github directory and then another directory under that called workflows. And we're going to create this build and scan.yaml. And this is a workflow configuration file that tells GitHub Actions, hey, when I check in this code on push or on pull request, I want to run this one job, build and scan. It's going to run on an Ubuntu VM. It's a full VM with a ton of great software installed, including Docker and Docker Compose. It's going to go through some steps. It's going to check out the code uh, using a GitHub uh, GitHub proprietary action called Checkout. Um, then it's going to build the app using Docker Compose build. And it's going to run that app in the background and then move on to the next step with uh, the app still running in the background so we can run HawkScan on top of it. Then we've built a, a GitHub action. They've overloaded the term actions. Um, but we've built an action, which is a custom module that makes it a little easier to run HawkScan in the pipeline. Um, this is what it's called. So we, we use our action. We feed an environment variable in, which is uh, the API token, which is going to be, it's a secret. Uh, we'll feed that in as a GitHub secret. And then we also need to feed in the API key for StackHawk itself so it can post results back to our platform. We need to tell it, uh, hey, we've got an environment variable that we want to inject into the container. And that environment variable is called API token. And of course, that's the token to do API authentication to uh, the Java Spring Volney application. Um, so if you, if you want, you can start building that application yourself uh, or building this workflow yourself, again, in the GitHub workflows directory, .github slash workflows. Um, but we also need to set up our secrets in GitHub, and we're going to set up two of them. First one is the Hawk API key, which is going to get fed in here, and our API token, which needs to be it's a secret, also fed in there. So I'm going to go over to my repository. Uh, and in my Java Spring Volney re repository in GitHub, go to Settings and find Secrets over here on the left. And add a new repository secret. First one will be Hawk API key. Let's see, I've practiced this one once or twice. And um, this API key you should be able to get from your own API key variable. So I'll just echo API key. There it is. And if you lost your API key, you can in the Stackhawk platform, you can go create a new one, set that value there. Add the secret, and then I'm going to add one more secret, the API token for authenticating to Java Spring Volney. And this one is just going to be, it's a secret. Oops, needs to be all caps, though. OK, I've got my secrets set up. Now I need to build my workflow. So I'm going to copy paste it from my notes here. Again, I'm going to create a new file in here called, let's see, create new file. 
dot github lowercase dot github slash workflows and any YAML file it finds in here, it's going to try and interpret as a GitHub Actions workflow. And then build and scan .yaml. New file, dump in my results, my uh, configuration. So again, the, uh, the workflow is called build and scan. It's going to work on, on push and on pull request. It's going to check out the code build the app, run the app, run HawkScan Hawk against it. Let me commit my changes. So just say, uh, let's see what we got here. We've got stackhawk.yaml has been modified, and we've got a GitHub directory. So we'll just git add all of that with a dot. Git commit message added HawkScan workflow. We just did that. Then we will push it. All my commits have been pushed up to GitHub. And now if you drop into GitHub, you find the Actions tab over here. We should see our HawkScan workflow running. And of course, it has failed. No event triggers defined in on. That tells me that we've got some form of YAML configuration problem. Because we've said that this is going to run on on, push, and pull request. And build and scan. Maybe it doesn't like this um, comment up here, so I'll remove that. Uh, two spaces, two spaces, two spaces, two spaces. Yeah, this should this should be okay. Um, what else could it be? It's in the GitHub workflows directory. All right. So I've removed that comment. Do that again. Go to actions. Here we go. Yeah, apparently it didn't like that comment. Head over to tweak, the tweak commit, build and scan job. It's trying to set up the job now. And so now it'll show you all of these steps that, uh, that we defined in the workflow. So first was to check out the code. It found the code and checked it out. Now we're building the app. And this could take a little while because GitHub hasn't seen this app in a while. So it's pulling down all the Docker images, going through building it out. And then if all goes well, it'll run the app and run Hawkscan. And now we're at kind of a pause point, and I wanted to check and see if anybody has questions. And if you have questions or if you've found some success, um, please let us know in the chat. I'd love to know how every how everything is going. All right, we've built out the right. image. And we have run the app. And now we're running Hawkscan. And this blue line here shows you, so we, we gave it a GitHub Actions configuration. Um, but that was just translated into a Docker run command, just like the commands we've been running from our consoles. Um, and it's pulling down the Hawkscan image, authenticating to Stackhawk, pre-scan validation, feeling good, no whammies. Go Hawks again. Zach, maybe while that's building, maybe you can talk about how teams use this in their CI CD pipeline. Like when is the right time to add Stackhawk to something like GitHub's GitHub Actions 
when it comes to planning that software development life cycle, um, where can you be successful with that if you're thinking about implementing security testing in CICD? For sure. Yeah, we really like to see people um, adding this to their pipeline somewhere before production um, because it's a, you know, it's a really, you know, heavy duty scanner. It can actually cause some damage to your application if you try to run it in production. And specifically what it can typically do is try and inject data into your database. It's gonna try and do that if it can. Um, and so we totally recommend running it in pre-production, Re recommend running it from the command line before you check your code in. You know, if you if you want, that's a great way to sort of pre-check um, so you don't get any whammies once you check into your code base. But a lot of times people will have a, like a pre-production environment where they try and stand up their diff their applications. And if you deploy to a pre-production environment like that, that's an excellent opportunity to then kick off the scan. So if you've got a, a build pipeline that ends in a deploy stage, that's a wonderful place to do it. Um, also, if you have a pre-prod or even a prod um, branch that you push to where you do a final set of tests, a lot of times, if you're if you're using microservices and you can and you have good mocks and stuff, you can you can often run these kinds of integration tests with a live environment, just in Docker Compose, just just like I did now, so that it just runs in the pipeline, runs the scan, and then tears the environment down, which is exactly what we've done here, and that's that's a really great way to do it if you can, um, because that way you've, you're always starting with a fresh database. Because it'll change database um, data in your database from time to time, um, what can happen is something we've referred to as the, the pants problem, because one of our early test apps was a, pant, a, a shopping database with a bunch of pants. And every time we ran the scanner, it would add more pants to the database. And then our scan results would be different every time. It Basically, we would have more and more problems that the scanner found, because there was more and more data. So anyway, long answer. <clears throat> All good. All right, so that scan worked. And I'm going to StackHawk platform again. And there's our scan results. And it looks much the same as before, <clears throat> although it was a slightly different environment. So we did get slightly different de uh, details. And I think probably it just found in this proxy disclosure section, it just uh, it just happened to fuzz a couple different um, endpoints. Anyway, I think that's it. And I think we're uh, our time is up. What do you think, Rebecca? I think that covers everything. Um, I don't know, Zach, if you can drop that slide deck into the chat, the link to the Google Slides. Just since uh, thank you for everybody for bearing with us through the not very YAML friendly chat. Um, but Zach can drop that in. So if you want to try this yourself you can have um all those configs and commands right there in the doc so hopefully that's helpful we really appreciate everybody joining our workshop on api security testing um and feel free to reach out to zach or myself um zach you're zachary.conger at stepoff.com is that right that's right um, and then, or just feel free to drop us a line at hello at stackhop.com if there's anything else. So okay. thank you, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your conference. Um, and, and there we go. There's the link there's to the presentation the to the slide deck. Um, Perfect. Thanks so much, everybody, for following along. Awesome. Thanks, Zach. Talk soon. Talk to you later.